Hey friends, welcome back to Flourishing in Faith. If you're on your daily walk, drive to work or school, or simply just making dinner, I pray these conversations bring glory to God and ultimately draw you closer to Him. I decree that your relationship with Jesus will flourish and faithful fruit will be the evidence of that. If you hear my dog's little squeaker toy in the background, just ignore it. You know, it's it's a little hash brown. He's having a great time. Um, <laughs> but we are in a Luke 20. So we're in podcastmas day 20. It is we're almost to Christmas, so excited. And as we get deeper into the story of Jesus, as we know, the authorities and religious people, they obviously start to question Jesus, start to confront Jesus, and they try to trap him and to get him to say something, to try to condemn him, to try to get everybody else to see apparently what they see so in verse one through eight that's basically what's happening they are hoping to trap jesus in some type of blasphemy because they're asking about his authority so in verse two they ask him by what authority are you doing these things or who is he who gave you this authority so they are asking him and basically they are wanting them basically wanting jesus to blaspheme him god and so jesus understood obviously he understands their heart posture behind these things and then he answers them with a question and he says i'll also ask you one thing and answer me the baptism of john was it from heaven or from men and then they reason with each other and then they basically say that they don't know when they do know and jesus said neither will i tell you by what authority i do these things Because he knew their heart intention behind all that. So, hmm, I'm like, Jesus, you're smart for not talking too much. I just love how Jesus was, um, he was very careful with what he said. He didn't just say whatever was on his mind. I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of things going on in his mind. But he was very careful with how he said things. He never outright answered things, um, if he, because he knew their heart posture behind it, and I think that's a wonderful discerning of Christ, that he understood the heart posture behind what they were asking, and so he knew how they would even receive that, and if they would receive the truth with, obviously, with a good heart, or if they would receive that truth, and then they would try to turn that against him, so Jesus knew that, and so he had asked him with a question, he answered with a question, I thought that was really, really cool. And then in verse 9 through 19, it talks about the parable of the wicked vine dressers. So it's actually all these parables in chapter, in Luke chapter 20. It is also in Matthew chapter, I think, 22 and 23. So I was comparing and contrasting those two as in my study today. And it was talking about a certain man planted a vineyard. And leased it to vine dressers and went to a far country for a long time. And then at that vin- at the vintage time, he sent servants to the vine dressers that they may give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. And then he sent three of them, and each one, one was beat, one was treated shamefully, and one was wounded. And then the owner of the vineyard basically asked, Well, maybe if I bring my beloved son to hear maybe they will respect him but then they that was actually wrong wrongly looked at because actually the vine dressers they saw him as the heir so then they decided to kill him and that is very comparable to the god's prophets and jesus so the the servants that were sent were, representa- were, were represented as God's prophets that he sent since, you know, since the Old Testament to the people and how they rejected God's prophets. And then now they are conspiring to kill Jesus, the heir. <laughs> and what really stuck out to me is verse 18. And Jesus says, whoever falls on that stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will be it will grind down him into powder. So the stone of unbelief will be destroyed. It talks about how that stone that was rejected in verse 17 talks about the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. 
aka Jesus. He is the chief cornerstone. And that stone of unbelief in us will be destroyed. And so that stone will become the cornerstone. A.K.A. Jesus. So, a lot going on there. Go deep dive into that. Because that's really, really good. And then, in verse 20 through 26, is another Pharisee. They're still trying to come at him. I mean, and all of these things, because as Jesus' is, his popularity rises, okay, and his people, his following arises, like we talked about yesterday, the multitudes and the multitudes and the multitudes of people, and these religious leaders they they see that they must first entrap Jesus and discredit him among the people for the, so then somebody else will be able to agree with him and agree with them, you know, that Jesus apparently is this false prophet that they think he is, which he's not. But they the reason why they're asking him all these things, they're trying to trip him up and to discredit him among the people so then that has somebody that will agree with him. <laughs> But there's a lot of people that are following Christ currently. So in verse 20, they basically send spies to pretend to be righteous, which is not fooling Christ. Because in verse 23, he says, But he perceived their craftness and said to them, Why do you test me? Hmm. So it's Jesus obviously is perceiving their craftiness with all this. And he knows (laughs) that these people are trying to entrap him and I just think the main thing like I talked about in the beginning of this podcast that I'm getting out of this chapter is that God really and Jesus really was careful about how he responded to people because knowing their heart posture I think especially if we get like a, a weird feeling about somebody get a weird you know I don't know you just don't trust somebody very well or you just kind of get like a a weird feeling I would lean into that and pray about that and see that's God because God will give us discernment on certain people and certain things and certain conversations. And I think another thing is that we don't have to share everything with everyone. I think often we'll trauma dump on people and we will, you know, just vent and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we don't have to do that (laughs) like I know that that's really seems helpful but then that's in a right place but all at the same time we don't we don't want to just share everything about our life to just random people or just to just anybody these details about our life and the details of who we serve and not necessarily who we serve who we are and because at the same time you don't know what kind of ill intentions they may have and we have to just be careful. And I just love how Jesus was very careful and cautious about his words. And when he spoke, he spoke with intention. And I think it reminds me of just whenever I was little and you're growing up and your parents, like, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And I'm like, you're right. So I, I just, I think honestly, God's teaching me. He's like, if you can't say anything nice about this person or this situation, if you keep your mouth shut or if you don't have anything to say don't make up something to say just wait and process and then you can speak and because there's so much power in prayer and saying hey maybe you're having an argument with a friend or a family member saying hey I'm gonna go away for a bit a bit process this pray about this and then I'll come back and commune with you if they can't respect that then that's up to them but I think a lot of us will lash out and we will talk and talk and talk and then you know we're missing the point you know our words so sometimes pointless I'm, I remember when I was in I was in high school I don't know how many times when the conversation kind of got dead or bored somebody would say oh my gosh I'm so tired and then everybody in the classroom would agree oh my gosh I'm so tired I'm so tired this is what I did last night this is what I did last night and I'm like I'm like, this is not for full conversations. And I would obviously, I would, I would put that myself in that. And I still do that sometimes. But I'm, I just think God's really telling me like, you know, and just in James, you know, be 
swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. So it's just being slow to speak and swift to hear and slow to wrath. That's something that God's teaching me personally too. So it's kind of sidetracking a little bit. (laughs) But then in verse 27 through 40, talking about the Sadducees and the Sadducees are actually the people, people kind of like a a denomination in the Jewish realm. And those people that deny there is resurrect, there is a resurrection deny that there is a resurrection if i can speak they don't believe in resurrection um and basically jesus kind of proves to them that there is resurrection (laughs) and then what really stuck out to me is in verse 38 where it says for he is not the god of the dead but of the living for all live to him so we don't serve a god that's a god of the dead he's a resurrecting god so jesus was kind of clearing things up in that part (laughs) And then what stuck out to me at the end, in verse 45 through 47, Jesus talks about being, being, be aware of the scribes. And then what really stuck out to me is how he said that they desire to go around in long robes, love greeting in the marketplace, the best seats in the synagogue, and the best places of feast, who devour widows' houses, and for pretense make long prayers. These will receive greater condemnation. So these people who desire this popularity, who desire these greetings and the best seats in the house, the best places, they these long prayers, it's very religious. And those people will receive greater condemnation and they will not receive the, the kingdom of God because they're not coming like a child. They're coming like they know it all. And Jesus was basically kind of exposing <laughs> really exposing all of these Pharisees at this time. And so basically in Luke 20, what I really got out of is that Jesus is exposing the heart of people, especially the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all these C's. <laughs> but also that Jesus was very careful in his responses and everything. And I, I really admire that about Jesus. And I want to be more like Jesus in that way too. Alrighty, friends. So thank you so much for joining me for podcast Miss Day 20. If you're excited for tomorrow, comment down below. I'm very excited for tomorrow, day 21. We're so close to Christmas, and I'm so excited to celebrate Jesus and to celebrate his birth. Alrighty, friends. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, friends.